Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Sagu Sports Network. My name is Evan the Astro Kid, and I am joined here by my wonderful co-host. Introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. It's Clutch Eye. How we doing? Yeah, and we have a playoff game for our Sagu Lions Valorant team. This is week one of playoffs, round one, if you will, of the Division B playoffs for the ECAC Valorant League. And our Sagu Lions Valorant team will be playing against Bridgeport and their Division B Valorant team. I don't know if they have any others. But we've got a really exciting game tonight. Both teams only taking three losses. Sagu Lions with five wins. Bridgeport with four wins. And how are you feeling, Clutch Shire? We've got a really great game tonight. Yeah, looking at map stats and some of their uh, just KD ratios and their win losses with their streaks and what teams they went against. Looking at their ranks, I think it's going to be a really fun, um, explosive match, and there's going to be a lot of close calls, I think. I think it's going to be a really good match. Sweet. We are very, very excited for this. Um, this In this regular season, now having been finished, coming into playoffs, it is a single elimination bracket. The teams have been split up based on their seed, which was determined by their performance in the regular season. And they go up against different teams throughout this bracket, and if you lose a set you are out. Or if you lose a, a day, a game, if you will, you are out. And there are no losers brackets, no redos. That is it. It's win or lose. Uh, winner takes all. Everything is on the line for these competitors. But for all of you who are wondering what might be going on with this Valorant game, I'm going to give a brief explanation of what Valorant is. So this game is what is referred to as a first-person shooter or FPS. The main mechanic is to shoot the opponents with guns to decrease their life. Now, this game is played by two teams of five players. They are fighting each other on a pre-selected battlefield that we will refer to as the map. Now, each map is unique and allows the players to fight in different ways, and maps are chosen by the teams playing in the current game. This is something they do uh, earlier on in the day. Now the game is played in rounds, with the first team that wins 13 rounds being declared the winner of the game as a whole. So keep in mind, 13 rounds is the key. If both teams reach 12 round wins, they will continue to play rounds in overtime until one team wins by two rounds. That is the only exception to 13. If they both... both I am all over my words today. If both teams reach 12 round wins, they will continue to go up until one team wins by two rounds. This is a very common thing in volleyball and ping pong and the such. The team that wins two games out of three wins the set and takes this playoff win. Each round is played in a bomb arming and bomb defusing scenario. The attacking team's objective is to take their bomb, which we will call the spike, and arm it or plant it on one of the available target locations that are known as sites, and they are listed with a letter as in site A, site B, site C. Now, the defending team's objective is to stop the attacking team from planting the spike on one of the available sites, or if worse comes to worst, disarm or what we will call defuse the already planted spike before it explodes. Now, the teams will alternate between attacking and defending every six rounds until the game ends, unless we get to overtime in which the teams will alternate attacking and defending every round, I believe. Along with those team-specific objectives, if all players of one team have died, then they automatically lose the round and the other team wins. This can be before or after the bomb is planted, and the only exception to this rule is if the attacking team has already planted the spike and it goes off before the defending team can defuse it. Even if all the attackers have died, if the defending team cannot defuse the spike before it explodes, the defenders lose. At the start of every round, you receive a certain amount of money that is determined by how well you did in the previous rounds. This is known as your economy or your econ. This is actually a very important part of the strategy of Valorant because your econ is accumulative and grows and builds throughout each round. This money is spent on weapons, shields, and abilities at the start of every round and at the start of round one and round seven, which is when the game starts and when they switch sides. All players have the same gun they start with and the same amount of money, and they're all reset to this baseline economy. Now, each player has their amount of money, that, and they can buy their own gear, and it's individual to them. If a player dies during a round, they lose all of their current weapons and must purchase new weapons in the following round. So it's very important if you see these players die. A lot of times, if they know they're going to win, they will hold their weapons and not die. This is referred to as saving, so that in the following rounds, they don't have to rebuy guns, and they can keep the ones they had. Also keep in mind, there is a mechanic to buying your teammates' guns with your money, which is somewhat important. 
Along with specific maps that are picked each game, each player will pick a character, and in this game we refer to them as agents, that has their own unique abilities. Each agent can dramatically change the strategies of the game and allows teammates to work together in different ways. These abilities have different effects like blinding the opponent, putting up a portable wall, or shooting a giant explosive at the enemy, which lots of them have that one. There are some key terms when it comes to these abilities that can change how they work, and I'm just going to give you a brief description of the main ones you'll see in this game. So a flash is an ability that briefly blinds the opponent. Think of this like a flashbang in modern tactical combat. A wall is an ability that creates a wall. Now, this can either be a physical wall or it can be like an effect of a wall to blind their line of sight, like a wall of fire or a wall of poison. A smoke is an ability that creates an area clouded by smoke, which is essentially a smoke grenade, and it prevents anyone from seeing through that area. And some smokes have different effects, but that will be explained in detail once we see it. A Molotov, or sometimes we'll call them mollies, is an ability that creates an area on the ground that deals damage if people walk through it. So, you know, like a Molotov cocktail. And... Finally, a silence is an ability that prevents opponents from using their abilities for a limited duration. Think of it kind of like a lockdown or a shutout. And there are more abilities and there are more effects that go into these agents and the different things they can do. But if we see one, we'll do our best to explain it on the fly. Now, that is the essence of Valorant. Keep in mind, this is best two out of three. We will be playing at least two maps, possibly three maps. And they will be going to round 13, unless both teams reach round 12, in which they will be going and continuing until one team wins by two. Now, that was a very long description, but once you actually start seeing the game and how it works, it will make a lot more sense as to what is actually going on. Now, Clutchshire, there are so many things that these competitive players are thinking about because what would you say is the key thing that they need to be pre preparing for? What is the most important element of that is specific to Valorant that you would say needs to be thought about for this kind of competitive game? Yeah, the biggest thing here that they're going to need to worry about is communication. Especially going to playoffs here when you're going up against other teams that have gotten as far as you have. Mm. Communication, telling where teammates are and working together as a team to win rounds and defuse spike is probably the biggest thing to do in this game. Yeah, and communication can change a lot, knowing where the opponent is, being able to hide on for your own sake and for your teammates' sake, being able to stay out of sight from the opponents because another mechanic is that for each round, if you die, you do not respawn. In a lot of other games like Call of Duty and Overwatch and games like that, most times you will respawn throughout the round and throughout the game. In this, each round, you do not respawn. So numbers advantage is a huge component to this game. So if you get taken out and now it is uh, five opponents on the enemy team with four on your team, you're at quite the disadvantage there. And we will see what these two teams can do here to... De defend this playoff position and how they can continue to possibly find themselves in grand finals and winning playoffs. Indeed, yeah. But we are hopefully going to get into the game soon. Right now they are kind of working through all the little nitty-gritty details of getting in the lobby, checking the network, and making sure that everything is set up where it needs to be. And hopefully soon we should be hopping into game one and then they will go into a phase where they all pick their agents. Now how important is agent coordination um why don't you go into detail about the different kinds of agents that you could pick of course yeah so obviously you've talked about it earlier uh, we have four different types of characters you have duelists which specialize in getting kills and making space on site um second we have uh sentinels those are meant to walk down sites hold things together and stop players from either entering or going on flanks and surprising your team from behind Third, we have controllers. These specialize in smoke, just like you see the Syntix clip right there. Uh, smoke orbs and smoke clouds that lo lock off lines of sight and allow for easier plays, like that wall right there. Then finally, we have initiators. That's something like Sky that you will see that has majority of blinds or other things to support the team in getting information uh, and help pushing onto sites. You'll see initiators usually come with duelists. The duelist pushes in and the initiator uses their utility to help them secure the kills. So having a balance of all these things is pretty good. Um, a lot of time I will usually see one Sentinel to lock down a site, um, one Duelist, because while Duelists are good, they don't have too much utility. And then you're going to want a Controller, because if you have too many smokes, then it kind of gets all over the place chaotic. And then finally two Initiators, because they have the most um, 
value and, I guess, utility that you can use in the game. So a lot of time to outplay people. Very strategic, very very much a thinking kind of game. Indeed. Lots of strategizing, and a lot of it happens actually before you get into the game, because, you know, picking the map beforehand, picking the agents beforehand, they're already thinking of the kinds of strategies they will need to employ to get a leg up on their opponent, create these win conditions. That's a very big part of a game like this, is how do I create this consistent victory over my opponents? And that is something that we will see which team can secure the win, get the leg up in this this uh, round one of the ECAC Division B Valorant playoff game. And a lot of the time you'll see, uh, depending on the certain map, they'll pick different characters. Some initiators and some controllers are better on a map like, say, Pearl or uh, Haven, where the map is more open, and summer controllers are better in the closed-off maps like Ascent. Yeah, and the different maps have... As you said, different kinds of agents that are stronger, more optimal, and there are even different agents that work with different kinds of guns. Now, there are, everyone has the same amount of guns that you can possibly buy, and there are different things like assault rifles, there are sniper rifles, there are uh, submachine guns, which are kind of these lighter automatic weapons, and then you have the pistols, and each one costs a different amount, and they can prove to be very, very valuable. Um, and when it comes to your economy, what are some key terms we should be aware of going into this game? Yeah, so two that I will say that I will bring up quite often is full buy rounds, save rounds, and um, yeah, I guess full buys. Mm. So full buys are where you buy all that you can. It's going to be a heavy shield, all of your abilities, and something like an AR. So the Phantom, the Vandal, or the Operator, mm. one of the bigger guns that do the most damage. You have save rounds. These are where you're going a little bit low on economy and you want to have enough to be able to full buy the next round. So mm -hmm. they'll buy light shields, a pistol, or even if they have a little bit more money, they'll buy something like an SMG. Then finally, you have something called force buying, which we'll also see a few times here probably, where force buying is when you buy the most that you can with your certain cash. So that way you can try and level out the playing field if it's a, um, a key round in the game. So like say something like fourth round or... Um, if it's 12-12, they really need to get that up before they go into overtime. Mm. So, force buying is just buying whatever you can. If that's light shields and the phantom, or you can't buy all your abilities, or the bulldog, which is another type of AR that's a bit cheaper. Mm. Just buying the most that you can to try and level the playing field as much as you can if you don't want to give up the round. Yeah. And those are the three buy phases with economy that you're going to want to look out for the most. Yeah. And also, just to kind of explain what we're seeing here on the screen right now, in the top left inside of that uh, that little map grid area, that is the mini-map. And you can actually see every single player and where they are on the map with that mini-map. Now, you're also looking at the person that we, as the spectators, are watching at the moment. And you will also notice that we'll see red outlines of the enemy team. Now, the players that are playing cannot see those outlines. They are trying to guess where the opponents are, where they might be trying to engage, where they might be waiting. But we as the spectators can see them just so that we can get the full scope of the game and understand the strategy behind everything. But the players are not able to see that. And they are constantly trying to figure out where the opponents are, what they're trying to do, how they're trying to play. And that's a huge part of this game is just information, is knowing where the, the opponents are, what they're trying to do. Very, very important. And also at the bottom, you will see their health. You will see the abilities they have available to them. You will see their guns and different things like that. And we will get started with this round one shortly. We are going to go to a short break while we work out some of the uh, technical things of getting into this first game. But don't go anywhere. This has been the Sagu Sports Network.
Gamer activated. Nice, nice. Last player standing. One enemy. Thirty seconds left. Spike down mid. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Thank you for waiting with us. We are now ready to get into this game one, but quickly, there's something new that is with this game today. We have a new agent in Valorant. And Clutchshire, what is this funky little guy doing in this game, and what's his, what's his deal? Indeed, so the new agent is Gecko. I have no idea if we're going to see him today, but I'm going to go over him just in case we see him somewhere in one of our streams. So... Gecko is a new initiator, and he has some fun little abilities. People have been calling him the Pokemon Trainer because all of his little dudes are, well, they're little dudes. They're little monster Pokemon guys. Yeah. We so love the them. The first one that he has is Dizzy. It's the Z ability. It's a small little blue guy who you throw out and moves slowly and blinds anybody that it can see. Second, we have Mosh. He's the green one. It's a very large area of effect Molly, and after an arming time, does damage. The reason there's arming time is because the closer someone is to the center of the molly, it does more damage. If you're at the very center, lethal damage. Mm. And then finally, we have everyone's favorite, Lil Man, Lil Dude, Wingman. Wingman. You're able to throw him out, he's able to bounce off walls, and if he spots somebody, he can concuss them. Mm. But you can also, like Valorant likes to do, Choose they like to give agent. people new ways to play the game. Mm. What Gecko can do that's new is you can actually give the spike to Wingman and he can actually plant or defuse the spike. Mm. So actively kind of like acting as a sixth player while the other people can control site and have to worry worry about planting. Yeah. Then finally we have Thrash. If you guys know KJ's ultimate where it detains people, they can't move, can't pull out guns or use abilities. Thrash is a movable version of this. And once it jumps, it hits anybody in a certain area and they're detained. Mm. The very Also the very cool thing with the exception of Mosh, so Dizzy, Wingman, and Thrash, after you use them and Gecko is still alive, you can go back and pick them up to use them until the end of the round. Mm. And that is very, very strong. It's it's reusable utility. Indeed. So you which... can use it to clear a site on defense. If they're not there, you can simply pick them up and rotate back to the other site and then use them for retake. Yeah. Very, very strong. He's very flexible. Indeed. And he's new, so people are still kind of learning the strategies of how yep. to use him. So we might see him. Be played this is today. the first week that he is actually available for play, so mm -hmm. we might not be able to see him at all. We might see him in the later rounds when people get more comfortable. But I'm saying, for at least for round one, I don't think we're going to see him yet because people haven't been able to get enough competitive environment with him. Yeah, but maybe somebody's feeling a little maybe. risky. Maybe somebody's trained on some of these. It'd be a lot uh, of fun to see. That would be very, very fun. We love Gecko. But we hopefully will be getting into this game one very, very shortly. And just to take a look at their team composition here, seeing the different agents that the two teams are playing, what are some assumptions you can make about their play styles and how they're going to approach this? Yeah, so if we look across the board, almost every single pick is the same except for the um, initiator pick. One is playing KO, which is the defending team, and then us, we are playing Sova. Mm. So other than that, a lot of teams are pretty balanced. They kind of know going into this, what you're playing for, Sam, what agents are good here. KJ being probably the best Sentinel for this because she can set up on B really well. Uh, Jet is great to peek from mid and just has that dash's potential to really get picks from anywhere, so she can be aggressive. Mm. Um, Fade, everyone's liking Fade as an initiator because of the um, abilities that she can do to uh, pick people up mm. with her eyeball. Yeah. Um, and her ultimate is just really well, mm. is really good as well. Yeah. Um, then we also have Omen. Omen's probably the best controller for smokes on this map. I've seen a few variations, but I think Omen is like the star pick for most people. 
And then we get down to the second initiator pick, which some people are kind of iffy on, some people like KO. Especially if you're defending first, because you can throw that knife and detain people, stop people from using their abilities, and stop them from pushing for a few seconds. Um, but then we also have Silva, who is more for shock darts and gives a bit more information than KO does. But then again, it's all comfortable to who is playing them. I know Jericho is very comfortable on the Silva. We've seen him do some amazing plays with the Odin on B site. We love him shooting through that special wall, which we might be able to see in this map. That would be very, very cool. Jericho, knowing this Ascent Silva gameplay, and yes, some Odin wall bangs would be very cool. Indeed, this is Sagu's right favorite map, and they uh, just as much they've played the most this season, and right have here. still a positive record. And also keep in mind that before each round actually starts, there is what is referred to as a buy phase. So this is a limited amount of time where all of the attacking players and defending players can spend the money that they have, create strategies, set up for the start of the actual game, so that once they begin playing, they've got everything they need, they're ready to go, and then they can compete it optimally. looks like one of the teams, I'm guessing it's going to be, uh, they paused. Okay, so they are going into their technical timeouts. It looks like they're still having problems getting their fifth player, I think, into the lobby. And maybe there's uh, lag or something like that. But this is what they're using, the technical timeouts. Each team has 15 minutes uh, of technical timeouts, which is time that they can use if, say, a computer goes out or someone can't join or there's lag or any other kind of technical problem right that they here. need. So right now, yeah, we just got to confirm that uh, their fifth player is actually going to go ahead and restart their computer due to issues. Mm. So that's one of the things we use technical timeouts for. There's 15 minutes just so that way there is absolutely nothing that can interfere with certain gameplay and possibly having to forfeit maps. Yeah, because unfortunately, if you take too long, considering it leaves kind of an unfair time gap and, and stall nobody likes stalling. And so if you stall for too long, then you can be penalized with lo losing your timeouts and up to a certain point actually losing some games. Well, now that we're actually into the map uh, and they have started play, FFing is no longer, or forfeiting the map is no longer an option. And what we're going to do is they're just going to play a man down. So it had to be constantly 4v5s and he wouldn't be able to join until the next map. Wow. So Interesting. A current disadvantage if they use up the 15 minutes of timeouts. Okay. Well, we are going to go to a short break while they get these technical difficulties resolved. Once again, don't go anywhere. We will get into round one. I, I promise we will get there and it will be quite shortly, so stick around. This has been the Sagu Sports Network. We will be right back. Gamer activated.
timer activated. Gamer activated.
timer activated. Gamer activated. <laughs> Thank you.
Timer activated. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Sagu Sports Network, and we are going to hop into this game one. Now, the Sagu Lions Valorant team is being a little flexible here. They're working with this Bridgeport team, and they're going to try and go for this map one, see if it works out. If it doesn't, unfortunately, I believe Bridgeport will have to take a forfeit there, and then we will go on to map two. But we're going to see if maybe they can get connected, and if everything starts working and they can begin playing, then we will have our standard series. We will see. Yeah. Yeah. So if the team is not able to uh, play this map, I think the agreement was that they take the whole series because they did waste all of the time limit so far. Mm. Okay. So we'll have to see. Uh, it's if we load it. I already see that it's taking a little bit longer. Yeah, it's taking so. a little bit of time. So we'll see. We're kind of being hopeful here, but. Um, in this map ascent, there's lots of tight corridors, small hallways leading into big open spaces where you can get um, cornered and flanked if you are not careful. So we are going to see how these two teams are able to play well and adapt. The Sagu Lions are going to start on the defensive side. So their objective is to stop the Bridgeport team from planting the spike. And if the Bridgeport team succeeds in planting the spike, it will be the Sagu Lions job to get on. No, we're on attack first. So are we on attack? Yes, we are. Is that correct? <laughs> yep. I was like, I also oh, saw because we're playing solo. My so. apologies. So <laughs> flip that. So the Bridgeport team's job is to stop the Sagu Lions from planting the spike. And if the Sagu Lions get the spike planted, it is their job to defuse said spike. Now we will see. Um, hopefully there will be no more technical difficulties and we can actually get into a game here. But thank you to all of you who have stayed watching and are here with us on the Sagu Sports Network and Sagu Esports broadcast. We appreciate you. And also keep in mind that these players really need your support. There's a lot going on. There's a lot on the line. Playoffs is a big deal. 
And so if you get a second, go like, go follow, go support them at Sagu Esports. The, the players love knowing that you're there, that, that you are at their back and you are encouraging them, you're strengthening them. That helps them stay motivated and help pushes them to go forward in playoffs with a good headspace. So please go and do that if you get a second, but hopefully we will get started in this game It is one. already taking too long, and usually when I've seen this message, that means someone disconnects. Oh? Okay. Okay, we're in... But I can hear the Discord that he might not be there. It seems like they're trying to figure out maybe we'll if this see. this uh, fifth player for the Bridgeport team is able to get connected or not. They might. We'll have to see if they they're might play go a four v five, or they might just uh, forfeit the series. We'll have to see how this works here. I don't know yet. And we will. Try and see what the verdict is. That was quite a long loading screen, and it looks like it is counting down. It looks like every single player one. has moved so far. Okay, and it looks like we're going to hop into game one. Except for possibly their omen. Okay. All right, so looks like they're saying. Be... Oh, wait. <coughs> okay. Oh, it seems moving. like he has connected. All right. He is in game. And here goes the first round. Jericho pushing through mid already being pretty aggressive. Wow. All uh, right. Wow, and what a wow. time play. Now I'll have to see what happens. Yeah, we are going to play this round one of the playoffs for... We can see an A push here. Wado picks up one. There's a pick on Mango. Another pick, Ognan on to Beam Bounty in mid. He's going to push. He sees and he's able to get Hammer. It's now a 2v5. Wow. Slays with the first pick on by Polar and Master Wings back on Ogden. They've stabilized it now. 1v3. All we have is Slays. Slays with a quick slays. flick on the Syntax's head there. Now is a 2 up heaven. He's only he's very low HP. Wado, he gets wow. the headshot and gets the first round. Great headshot by Wado there. And the Segu Lions lead up 1-0 to zero here on this first map. I am so, so surprised. They got to the... Look at that flick right there wow. from Slays on great the flick. head. That was crazy, but it was crazy. They got back in the nick of time. The they were, round had already started. They were about to go ahead and just say, hey, we're going to FF because we don't have a sub and he's not moving yet. And then wow. that instant, he comes back. He reconnects, and now we have the Bridgeport still in the running for the playoffs. Oh, it seems like he has disconnected. Take flight. Well, we'll see. And we're going to see if there's They're a chance checking. they could play. Maybe. <laughs> and the Sagu Lions getting control of mid here. There they are. But it seems One like they got a remaining. pick. Or pick is another word for kill. Bridgeport did, and now it looks to be one remaining. And Syntex cleaning it up. And there it is. And so, yeah, it seems like their fifth player has disconnected. All right, well, they are saying GG's here, so it looks like they might go ahead and just take the forfeit out right there. Um, and is that going to be the forfeit for this game one? I think... It might be a forfeit for the whole entire match because if they can't get him back, they've already used all of their time limit. And if he can't reconnect, they have no subs. So that means wow. they can't play the next map. And I think Sagu here is going to take their first win in playoffs. Wow. We are still in the match, though, and they're still kind of talking about it. Yeah, they're trying to see if maybe there's some kind of gentleman's agreement they can come to. There might. I think in the rules they are able to play a man down since they started, but I don't know if that's because... They've already wasted all their time. I don't know. We'll have to see. I'm trying to keep up with the Discord and see what they're deciding. And we'll see what kind of verdict we will see. is placed. All right. It looks like they are going to go ahead and for It looks like there's disconnections, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like they are claiming forfeit. Yeah, that is going forfeit. to be 
a round one win. That is kind of unfortunate. It is. Even for the Sagu Lions, like for whoever you're playing. They, you play. never, they do want to play, and they were really excited and seeing any kind of disconnection. So it's one thing if like there's scheduling issues, but for it to be like faulty equipment, that's always unfortunate. So unfortunately, yeah. Bridgeport has now been eliminated from the Division B playoffs, but that means Sagu Lions have one win, and they will be going on to round two actually later tonight. Versing SJU Crimson, which is scheduled for uh, 9 p.m. here in Texas. Mm. But I think they're going to see if they can contact them, reach out early, see if they can play even earlier. So that mm. might be even more beneficial to you guys. Yeah. Or you guys can come back in... However long it is. Two not, hours. Yeah, I'm not going to map. For the next map. And so we'll have to see there uh, if there's communication and whatnot. But All right. yeah, first map goes to Sagu Lions, and they're going to go into the next scene and going 1-0. and oh. Yep, and that is going to be... That for this game, so we will be figuring out what's going to be the specifics for this second game tonight, whether they want to do it earlier the same time or even later, depending on how the circumstances play about. But with that, we are going to take a bit of a break here, and please tune in for the second game because the Sagu Lions continue to be playing in playoffs, and um, SJU Crimson... They are heavy hitters. They know how to play the game, and they're, uh, I believe they're the eighth seed to our ninth seed, if yeah, I'm correct Yeah, so they were that. one of the teams that shared the exact same score with Sagu. Mm. The only difference was is that Sagu wasn't able to get a buy round like the other eight teams were. Mm. But considering they just got a technical t uh, technical forfeit, <laughs> hey, they got a buy round. It seems like they got a buy round. So we will be back shortly, and we will keep you guys posted on social media and all the different sources to make sure you guys are informed as to what's going on. But until then... This has been, and this will be, the Sagu Sports Network. <laughs> 